Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to install and wire up and network a Lowrance Elite FS9. All right, so I went ahead and attached my ram mount and drilled my hole for my wires. Um, pretty simple to do. Just used a hole saw for this. A simple drill bit for the screw holes here. Um, you have to be real careful whenever you're screwing and drilling into fiberglass. Uh, it can crack and splinter pretty easily. Um, and also it's very tough for the screws. So you wanna be very careful about what size drill hole and, and sorry, what size drill <laughs> and what size hole you're gonna use Giggity, um, to make sure that those screws go in um, and still bite, but they don't bind up. Also, always screw in by hand when you're going into fiberglass, okay? Um, it's real easy with the drill to twist off the head of the screw, and then you're trying to drill out or punch through a screw that's already in there, and it's just a whole headache. Ask me how I know, okay? So just be really careful and make sure you put it in by hand. Um, also, put some blue painter's tape over, which just kind of help protect the, the paint job whenever you're drilling into that. So I went ahead, like I said, I put the ram mount in. I've already attached my unit to um, the gimbal mount. And the thing I love about these ram mounts is you can put it exactly where you want it to go. You have all kinds of different adjustments that you can make, obviously. Ton of different directions and, and things like that. That's gonna bug me if it's not straight, so let me just even that out, there we go. All right, <clears throat> so that's kind of where I want it to go. I uh, just need to get the wiring uh, for the power and for the ethernet. I am gonna network this one to the unit that I have on the dash, so um, I'm not gonna have to worry about running a transducer wire all the way up uh, the boat, because I'm just gonna network the two together, and I can talk more about that whenever we get it set up. So first thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire the power straight into my trolling motor plate here. Um, Cause I've already got all the power things I need. There's the trolling motor. I've got a power gauge to read my lithium battery. Uh, I got a 12 volt plug here, a couple of USB plugs, and then it's all independently powered via the switch right here. So let me go ahead and show that to you. All right, battery is on. Just power this up. And then at this point, if my trolling motor was plugged in, it would be, it would be good to go. Showing a really good charge on my lithium battery. Uh, and so this would be a real, real easy power connection here. Just wire it straight into this, this panel. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, so I got all my supplies ready to go. I got the panel off. Um, now what we gotta do is wire up the power. This is pretty simple for a, uh, an already existing system. When I was refurbishing this boat, I actually rewired the entire thing. Every single wire in this boat is one that I put in. So I know the electrical system very well. Um, so I know exactly where I can tie into things. Uh, if you don't know your boat's schematics, then you know, look that up. Um, but generally speaking, red is gonna be your hot and black is going to be your neutral. On the power unit, uh, sorry, on the power cable for the Lowrance unit, um, this one has a yellow wire. The other unit that I installed did not have this yellow wire, so I had to look this up. This is for uh, the expansion system. If you are going to plug into a ethernet hub, then this will make sure that that hub has power. Since I'm not doing that, I don't need to use it. So what I'm just gonna do is snip it off down here at the bottom so that it's out of the way and discard that. All right, so now I've got my hot and my ground. So I've got the unit here. Uh, this is my switch and then I've got my USB power and my 12 volt power up here as well. So I'm just gonna tie into one of those because it'll be super simple. Um, everything is gonna be heat shrinked and uh, crimped with these marine grade um, electrical connections. And I'm gonna use this tiny little splitter right here to connect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the ground first. So I'll pull the ground off of my switch right there and I will attach this splitter 
just put it right on that prong reattach my ground all right then I'm going to take this ground connection and attach one of these connectors Like I said, everything's heat shrinked. This tool has been a godsend. That's gonna make that watertight. So we're not having any issues if water does happen to get into the system or moisture or anything like that. All right, so uh, next thing, let's go ahead and attach our inline fuse to our hot here. Since we do have some extra, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this and discard that. Next, I will strip this wire so we can make our connection. For this one, what I need is a butt connector. I'll go ahead and put that on here and crimp. And the same thing on this side. Now our fuse is connected to our power cable and heat shrink. You want to try and get all sides of it, make sure that it shrinks evenly. And then you should have a nice tight connection there for your cable. All right, so I did the um, connector on that side. I'm going to go ahead and do my connector for my power cable. Sorry for the hot side of the power cable. and drink. And we're done. It's always a good idea to have that fuse, that inline fuse in your system to protect your unit and uh, to include a fail safe in case something does happen. Um, these can prevent a lot of issues including an electrical fire if you don't have a short the fuse will blow first and then it will sever the connection, problem solved. So there's that. Um, now what we need to do is just feed this through here. Make sure that fits. Yep. Uh, all right, then we're gonna go through right here. All right, so that took a little longer than I anticipated it to, but that's all right. We got it through, so we've got our power cable here for our unit, and we have our connections here. I already put the um, splicer on the ground, on the neutral, so I'm going to just connect that in here. So now we have neutral. And then I need to put another splice on a hot. So that's going to go right there. I'm just going to go right off of the USB power because
there won't be much draw off of that that particular one at all anyway. So good to go there. And then we get our fuse line and connect to the power. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat shrink these. Kind of helps to, to grip everything um, so that it doesn't come off later. All right, there we go. Now we have power. It is that simple. Um, if you have to run your line somewhere else, you can do the same thing on another spot in your boat. Um, wherever you've got a hot and a neutral, you can splice into it. If you don't have those splitters, you can do a, a, a wire joiner. You just kind of clamp it on and you're good to go. I like these because they're a little bit more water secure. All right, so that is all good to go. I'm just going to Push this back in here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mount it back down yet. Let's let's test her out and make sure we're good to go before I reattach anything. All right, our battery is on. Let's take our cover off. I can do this from behind. There we go. Flip our switch. And power. There we go. We have power. And we'll go ahead and do our first setup. All right, so this is where we need to have our network uh, cables ready to go. So let's do that next. All right, so we have our ethernet cable. Let's go ahead and open that box up. So what we need to do is run this from here to our other unit. I'll run the cable later. I'm just going to set it all up and hook it up on the top side of the boat. For now, let's go into our settings and scroll down to network device name. Let's go ahead and name this bow FS9 all right so it did take me a second to figure out um, how to make sure that the two units could talk together so let me show you what you need to do uh, on your home screen hit the settings button you go down to sonar and make sure that your network sonar is on on both units. I turn internal sonar off on this unit because I don't have a transducer hooked up to it. I don't know that it really matters, but I went ahead and disabled it anyway. Uh, maybe that means it will uh, default to the networked sonar. I don't know, um, but that's what I did. Uh, so then let's go back to our settings menu. When you're on your network tab here, you do want to make sure that you have a device name. Okay, I named mine Bow FS9, uh, and then I named the other one Console FS7, so that way I know which one is which. Um, but yeah, when you make sure that sonar networking sonar is on on both units, then when you get to your home screen, you hit whatever chart you're looking for. So in this case, I'll do sonar, and then you hit source, and you can select. The console. So as the bow unit, I want to use the console transducer, so I will select console FS7. Right now I have it turned off because I'm not in the water. And then it will show you the data from the console. Uh, you can do the same thing on any of these. So if I went to 
sonar and side scan, and I can have side scan, source, console, and for the sonar, source, console, and I can set the settings independent of the other one, and it will share the uh, transducer information. So that's really cool. You buy another unit, throw it up on the bow, don't even have to buy another transducer, and the two units can share one. Uh, if I wanted to mount another transducer to my trolling motor and wire that one directly into this one, I could do that. Uh, but for right now, this was the most economical way for me to get another head unit on the bow. All right, so that's that. Uh, all I have to do now to button up this project is to run the network cable uh, through this hole here, through the, the gunnel, all the way up to the bow unit and plug it in there and then I will be done. So pretty simple to add another unit if you know how to do the, the power wiring and, and all of that, not too complicated. If you have any questions on, on how to do any of this or, or set up the units at all, I've been doing a lot of playing around with them and, and learning a lot about the units. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to help out. Uh, I think that's about it. So. I will see you on the water. Uh, hoping to get a fishing video in soon. Um, I think I might go fishing in the morning now that I have all this set up. Get on the water and get it tested. So I will see you all there. Keep the lines tight. Adios.